Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is calling on Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas to either resign or, if he refuses, be impeached. This is following the bombshell revelations about his wife, Ginny Thomas, and the text messages that she sent to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, basically coordinating with insurrectionists to overturn the 2020 election and effectively end democracy in the United States. Now, we're going to get to what AOC said specifically, but first, I want to explain why this call for impeachment or resignation is the only logical conclusion because of the threat that Clarence Thomas poses to democracy. He's proven that that he is incapable of being impartial as a Supreme Court justice. So when the Supreme Court rejected Donald Trump's request to withhold documents from the House Select Committee on January 6th, can you guess who the one vote in dissent on the Supreme Court was? Well, of course, it was Clarence Thomas. He was the only Supreme Court justice who voted that Trump should be able to withhold these documents, that they shouldn't be made public. Why? Well, because it's obvious that these documents would implicate his wife. And now because he lost, he was the sole vote. Now we are learning just how close his wife was to this effort to overturn the 2020 election. And if you haven't heard about what she said in these text messages to uh, Mark Meadows, she's just crazy. I don't know how else to put it. And I'm assuming given that they're married, he believes the same things that she believes. So as Grace Panetta of Insider Reports, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas's wife floated an outlandish conspiracy that members of the Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators were being sent to barges off of Guantanamo Bay to face military trials for sedition in newly uncovered text messages with former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators, elected officials, bureaucrats, social media censorship mongers, fake stream media reporters, etc., are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now and over coming days and will be living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition, Thomas wrote in a message on November 5th, 2020, two days after the presidential election, according to the Post. In other texts, Thomas urged Meadows not to concede the election, privately trashed Republicans in Congress, rallied behind controversial lawyer Sidney Powell, and told Meadows to release the Kraken and save us from the left taking America down. The Biden crime family steal this election! The media's covering up! We want our freedom for the world! Give us our freedom, Joe Biden! So that's what she was tweeting during the election. But on January 6th, we know that the organizations that she is a part of were working with people to overturn the election. They were urging people in certain states like Arizona and Pennsylvania to pressure lawmakers to override the will of the people, send rogue electors to the Electoral College, and basically kill democracy. So this is someone who quite literally is against democracy and she's married to a Supreme Court justice. That should horrify everyone. And obviously, because he's close to her at a minimum, that should make it very difficult for him to be impartial. I don't know about you, but if one of my family members did something bad, I know that people would suspect that I wouldn't be able to be impartial, so I would recuse myself just for optics sake, even if I could uh, you know, feel as if I would be impartial. But he did not do that. He voted to protect these documents from getting out. He wanted to protect his wife. And it's not just that he voted to protect his wife and that he's married to someone who is an authoritarian. As Brian Tyler Cohen explains, reminder, Clarence Thomas covered up over $685,000 that his wife Jenny received from the Right Wing Heritage Foundation. In the space on the disclosure form where he was supposed to write his spouse's income, he wrote none instead. So when you consider that and the fact that he was the sole vote of dissent against Donald Trump giving these papers to the House Select Committee on January 6th, I think it's obvious to deduce that he's compromised. He's not an impartial arbiter of justice. He's someone who's trying to protect his wife. He's hiding details that are crucial about his wife. This is completely unacceptable. And let me just explain to you, she isn't just saying that we should overturn the election. She's also espousing QAnon conspiracy theories. This whole idea that the Biden crime family would be arrested I mean, this is a QAnon conspiracy theory. There is this idea that on January 6th or during the um, ceremony to swear in Joe Biden, Trump would all of a sudden start arresting people. And that's when everything would begin. She's essentially a QAnon 2020 truther. She's insane. And her husband on the Supreme Court is doing things to protect her. 
So it's not just that Clarence Thomas is married to an insurrectionist, and that's a little bit too close for comfort. He has lied on disclosure forms, and on top of that, he is voting as a Supreme Court justice to hide documents about his wife to the public. That's unacceptable. So he needs to be held accountable. And as AOC explains, this is what needs to happen. Clarence Thomas should resign. If not, his failure to disclose income from right-wing organizations, recuse himself from matters involving his wife, and his vote to block the January 6th commission from key information must be investigated and could serve as grounds for impeachment. She continues, Congress must understand that a failure to hold Clarence Thomas accountable sends a loud, dangerous signal to the full court, Kavanaugh, Barrett, and the rest, that his acts are fair game. This is a tipping point. Inaction is a decision to erode and further delegitimize SCOTUS. And she's absolutely correct. The Supreme Court is facing a legitimacy crisis, the likes of which it never has seen. The closest I could point to is the Lochner era. But this is next level. You have a Supreme Court justice married to somebody who's authoritarian, who wanted to kill democracy in the United States and actively colluded with them, instructed them to not concede the election, worked with insurrectionists, is part of these organizations taking money from writing or organizations that are instructing people to protest, uh, pressure lawmakers, to uh, send rogue electors to the Electoral College. This is a dangerous individual. So if you allow him to stand at the Supreme Court with no accountability, then anything goes. Anything goes. So what's the point of the Supreme Court? If they're not going to protect the Constitution, then why listen to them? We might as well just disregard everything they have to say. Now, Ilhan Omar was actually the first to call for impeachment of Clarence Thomas. She did this on the 24th. But at this point, I mean, most House Democrats are too spineless to go there. And this was explained in a Politico article where uh, they discussed how most Democrats simply believed that they should defer to the January 6th committee for now. And Nancy Pelosi called for Clarence Thomas to recuse himself uh, when it comes to cases related to January 6th, saying, I've always thought he should recuse himself, but he's already demonstrated that he's not going to recuse himself. If he were going to do that and do the right thing, he would have done so during that case where he was the sole dissenting vote against Trump handing over documents. But he didn't do that, presumably, to protect his wife and his own reputation. So recusing himself, I mean, we're so far beyond that conversation. Now we need to talk about real accountability. But even the authors of this Politico article that kind of describe the position of House Democrats They're incredibly naive. They write, there's no indication that Clarence Thomas was aware of his wife's contacts with Trump's West Wing or was influenced by them in his decision making. So you mean to tell me that the authors of this article are naive enough to believe that him being the sole vote against Trump handing over January 6th documents is just an organic conclusion he reached? Well, if he reached that conclusion on his own accord, it's probably because he agrees with his wife, that the election was stolen. But I I think that we are adults and we can logically deduce that he knew how involved his wife was and he didn't want her to be exposed. And now we're seeing the situation where she possibly may have to testify before the House Select Committee on January 6th. So you don't think it's reasonable to think that his vote was to prevent that, prevent all of this from getting out? Really? Are we that naive? Do we have to pretend as if He's still impartial. I mean, it's ridiculous. So the only logical takeaway from all of this is what AOC and Ilhan Omar are calling for, either for his full resignation from the Supreme Court or for him to be impeached. Now, that's not to say that he's likely to resign or likely to be impeached. It's essentially politically impossible. But just because Republicans won't go along with it, just because Democrats won't even go along with it, doesn't mean that morally... It's not the correct thing to do because that is the correct thing to do when you have a Supreme Court justice who's been compromised, who's incapable of being impartial to protect the legitimacy of the Supreme Court. This is the only reasonable course of action. You have to hold him accountable or, as she explained, to send a message to current Supreme Court justices and future Supreme Court justices that you can basically get away with anything as a Supreme Court justice. And that's not okay. So if you want to protect the Supreme Court and by extension protect the Constitution, he has to resign or be impeached. And at a minimum, House Democrats and Senate Democrats should be calling for this because if you let him get away with this, then nothing matters. You could just be openly corrupt in the United States as a government official and there will be no repercussions. 
I mean, I thought that we're supposed to respect the Constitution and rule of law, and yet Clarence Thomas can work to protect an insurrectionist he's married to and nothing? No, I reject that. He should be impeached, and anyone who's not calling for it, in my opinion, is a coward. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.